Hello students, let's continue with the chapter that was pending that is the earth and its living world. So, now we are going to learn about the atmosphere. The envelope of air around the earth is called the atmosphere. As we go higher from the surface of the earth, the air in the atmosphere becomes rarer. Rarer means less. Now, there is an envelope of air that is our earth is surrounded by a layer of air all around and this layer of air is called the atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of a mixture of gases namely nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor and carbon dioxide. So as we go, as we move higher and higher towards big mountains or travel out in the air by aeroplane, so the air it becomes thinner and thinner. That means the air becomes rarer. Rarer means less. There are some other gases too in the air in very small quantities. The atmosphere means the layer is surrounded by which there are many gases. There are different kinds of gases also. Uh, but these gases, are uh, there are other some gases also but they are in small quantities. Okay, we will move to the next slide. How does it rain? Water on the earth evaporates continuously due to the heat of the sun. Water that has percolated into the soil also evaporates due to the heat and enters the atmosphere. So now let's learn about the water cycle and how rain is formed. Now we know that the surface of the water gets heated up. It becomes hot. Na? It gets heated up due to the rays of the sun. How does it get heated up? Because of the rays of the sun. As this water gets heated, it starts evaporating continuously. Now, not only the surface of the water, but even the water that has percolated. Percolated means which is gone inside the ground, which is gone inside the soil. That is collected into the soil that is that you call it as groundwater. The groundwater even that gets heated up and starts evaporating. Because of the heat of the sun and it evaporates, it goes into the atmosphere. It goes on top. We move to the next slide. As water vapor is lighter than air, it rises high up into the atmosphere. As it goes higher, it cools and condenses forming very fine droplets of water. The droplets are so small and light that they float in the atmosphere forming clouds. These small droplets join together and form bigger droplets which are heavy. They cannot float. Such drops of water fall down on the earth in the form of rain. Now when the water gets heated up, it changes into water vapor. Now what's water vapor? When you see the, uh, your, uh, when it rains heavily, your window glasses also, lots of water, uh, it looks dull, right? So that you'll call that also as, and then the water vapor is very light. It is very lighter than the air. It's very lighter than the air. So it rises up and goes higher up in the atmosphere. And we know that the air over the, uh, air over there is cooler. It's very cool. It's not hot as that on the surface of the earth. As where we are staying, it's not that hot. It is cooler. So when the water vapor combines with the cool air, when this water vapor combines with the cool air, it starts condensing. Now condensing means the water, the water vapor changes into some droplets of water. Okay. It condenses means it forms into small, small droplets of water. These droplets are very small. They are very light and they start floating and they form clouds. They form clouds. Now, they, these small droplets, as they as they are floating, they combine with other. Now, if one drop gets, uh, if one drop join another drop, it will become a little big. Other drop joins another drop, it will become more big. Okay? So, they combine with each other, with combine with other droplets of water and then they pick up bigger drops. We'll move to the next slide. This is the picture of how we get rain, how the process goes on.
Now these bigger droplets are much heavier. Okay, these bigger droplets are much heavier. Now when they are floating, they combine together, they become heavy. Now first when the small droplets were there, they were light. As they become bigger droplets, they become heavy. So now they cannot float anymore in the clouds, right? They cannot float anymore. So they start falling down. Now they cannot, they can't hold, they cannot hold themselves in the cloud. So what happens? So now they cannot float anymore. So they start falling down in the form of rain. So that is how we get rain on our earth. We'll move to the next slide. These process of evaporation, condensation and rainfall go on in a continuous cycle. This is known as the water cycle in nature. That is this process of evaporation that is water heating up and forming water vapor and rising up into the atmosphere that is called evaporation. And then the water cooling down that is called condensation. The water cools down and form drops of water. So that cooling process is called condensation. And when all water droplets collect and they form into big clouds and they cannot hold it together, those clouds cannot hold it together. So what happens? So they come down into the surface of the earth in the form of rain. So all this process of evaporation, condensation and rainfall is called as a water cycle. We'll move to the next slide. The various regions of the earth differ in many ways. Some regions are always covered with ice while others have a hot climate. Now you might be knowing there are foreign countries where as it rains over here in the form of water, it rains over there in the form of snow because their temperature is very cool as compared to other our temperature. Okay, so some regions are always covered with ice while others have a hot climate. There are mountains in some places and plains in other in others. Now you all might be knowing there are very high mountains in some places and there are very plain surfaces in other places. Some places have a lot of rainfall while others are dry deserts. You might be knowing in deserts rain don't fall much. There, 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 it's very hot over there. There are salty seas and oceans and also fresh water lakes. Now salty water can we drink? No that's not good for drinking but from where will you get fresh water? The water in the rivers that are called as Freshwater lakes. The ocean is shallow near the coast but always from the coastline the ocean can be several kilometers deep. Now it may go very very deep inside. Now that's uh, as you go towards the sea. What happens? It, it is shallow first and then it's very deep inside. We'll move to the next slide. We see a great variety in the living things that inhabit these different regions. Now on the planet, on our earth, we have different living things. Now what are they? Now what do we mean by this sentence? This sentence means that we see different kinds of living things that is both animals and plants in different regions of the earth. There is a picture where there are plants and there are animals together. We we'll move to the next slide. Now, where are different animals found in different regions? We'll learn about that. The polar bear is seen only in the snow-bound polar regions. Zebras are found in Africa. Kangaroos are found only in Australia. Elephants and lions are found in regions of hot climate. These animals are not found in any other region. Now, these animals belong to their particular region. Now, can zebra be found in snowbound region in polar regions? No, they won't be able to survive as, as we. If we go to some foreign country where it snows a lot, some people are, are, are agreed to the climate, but some are not agreed. So, what will happen? We will fall sick. Same ways to the animals. If they are not agreed to the uh, climate, they won't be able to live. For example, we can't find polar bears in other regions in hot climate. Can you find polar bears in hot climate? Have you seen? No, they are always found in the snow bound regions where there is snow. We'll move to the next slide. Plants in all these different regions also show a 
great variety this variety is characteristics of those different region now just like our animals plants it means that in a particular region we will find only those plants no other plants can grow now some plants only grow in that particular region they can't grow in all the because they are they also should be suitable to that climate so just like animals we find similar kinds of animals in a particular region we also find similar kinds of plants in a particular region we'll move to the next slide that is the biosphere many different kinds of plants animals and microorganisms are found everywhere on the earth on land in water and in the air living things exist in the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere they also interact with these spheres this living world constitutes the biosphere so we find living things in all three spheres that is in the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere in all these three spheres we find living things lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere we have seen birds flying in the air now in the air that means atmosphere now they also interact with the sphere and these living things on the different sphere they constitute the biosphere so all these spheres together form a biosphere move to the next slide that is your homework is you have to find the answers of these questions the first is a fill in the blank the envelope of air around the earth is called the dash dash are found only in australia living things exist in the dash dash and dash what is called the water cycle okay so that's all for now the chapter ends over here we we'll learn the next chapter in the next video thank you for listening children goodbye take care